beautiful wife. Marvin resided in a bustling city, occupying a solitary existence in a compact apartment. His employment involved remote work for a computer company, and he seldom ventured outside. His weekly routine included ordering groceries from a large supermarket, which were promptly delivered to his doorstep. All his necessities, including clothing, were procured through online means. Devoid of friends, his family residing in a distant city, Marvin remained disconnected. He had little interaction with his neighbors, choosing to work daily on his computer, observing the city's activity below from his window. Marvin found contentment in his reclusive lifestyle, thinking, I don't like people. I don't enjoy social gatherings or noise. My life is perfect for me. On a February morning, as Marvin marked his birthday, he sat down with breakfast and a sizable cup of coffee. Reflecting on the date, February 11th, he glanced at his email inbox. Messages from his mother, sister, and cousin remained unopened. Marvin's birthday took an unfortunate turn with an email from his employer, announcing the company's closure by the end of February, rendering him jobless. As Marvin anticipated an online clothing delivery, a sudden doorbell rang. Surprised, he opened the door to find the apartment manager with unsettling news. After receiving a letter, Marvin retreated to his living room to discover that the apartment building would be demolished, necessitating his departure by the end of March. The correspondence conveyed, this apartment building is scheduled for demolition. You must vacate by the end of March. In response, Marvin refrained from working that day, staring at his computer for an extended period. He lamented, my ideal life has come to an end. I must overhaul everything my job, my dwelling. In a moment of inspiration, he considered his substantial savings and contemplated a different path. Yearning for solitude in a tranquil setting without people, he pondered becoming a farmer, though he harbored an aversion to animals. The notion of being a fruit farmer, where trees remained silent, appealed to him. Within three days, Marvin purchased a petite farm in Oregon, situated twenty miles from the nearest town, specializing in cherries. Acknowledging his lack of expertise, he intended to educate himself through online resources. Acquiring a car, he packed up his computers and belongings, embarking on a journey to Oregon to commence his new life. Despite the farm's aesthetic charm with a lengthy driveway, Marvin faced challenges adapting to rural living. Accustomed to city life, he grappled with the absence of home deliveries, the unsuitability of his car for country roads, and intermittent internet connectivity that fueled his frustration. The unexpected warmth of friendly neighbors further unsettled him as they drove up to his house, knocked on his door, and called out to him upon his arrival. Marvin chose not to respond, remaining steadfast in his pursuit of solitude. Welcome gifts, including cookies and pies, were left for Marvin, accompanied by notes extending invitations to various events, such as a welcome party and a school festival barbecue. As he drove to town, friendly waves greeted him from everyone he passed, with people at the gas station and supermarket eager to strike up conversations and offer assistance with his farm. Marvin, however, detested the attention and chose not to respond. Come the end of March, cherry blossoms adorned his trees in a breathtaking display. Utilizing his internet when it was operational, Marvin dedicated himself to learning the intricacies of cherry farming. Yet, the first week of April brought a devastating storm with strong winds and incessant rain. Trees toppled, hindering Marvin's car access, and a power outage left him in the dark. The storm wreaked havoc on his beautiful cherry blossoms, and a portion of his house's roof was torn off, allowing rain to seep in. Trying to shield his computer with a blanket, Marvin found himself cold and despondent, realizing he had invested all his money in this venture and now stood to lose everything. Wearing a raincoat and wrapping himself in a wet blanket, Marvin experienced loneliness for the first time. 
Eventually, the storm subsided, and an unexpected cacophony of noise outside his house grabbed his attention. The gas station attendant arrived with a convoy of trucks and a tractor, accompanied by about twenty people who swiftly set to work. They cleared the trees from his driveway, covered the roof holes with sheets of plastic, and even brought warmth and sustenance into his home. Marveling at the kindness shown to him, Marvin questioned why these people were helping, given his previous unfriendliness. Sitting amidst the cheerful crowd, he witnessed a rapid transformation, his driveway cleared, the roof repaired, and a table laden with delicious food. Expressing gratitude, Marvin acknowledged his rudeness and asked why they had come to his aid. A wise, older man smiled and explained that it was a community norm in the countryside to assist neighbors in times of trouble, attributing their kindness to the sense of camaraderie ingrained in rural living. 